Here's the build for this crystal oscillator at 1 megahertz. Not too complicated of a oscillator. But I had this question about, you know, just exactly how does it oscillate, meaning, you know, how how does it get its feedback, you know, what's the RF path, and could you remove some parts or change some parts to find out what this is or where the path is, which is a really good question. So here's the wiring diagram. I'm going to put the scope up on the right side here, and I now have uh, the scope with the ground lead on ground and the scope is now on the output of this circuit. And what we're going to do before I start changing the circuit, we're going to take a look at a few points here. We've got our output, of course, and now I'm going to move the scope up to the, the base here. There we go. And as you can see, the output is a little higher, but I wouldn't use the base as an output because if you tried to hook this up to another circuit, chances are this circuit would stop oscillating or you'd get some unusual results. Okay, let's take a look at, oh, let's see, the collector. Right as it goes into the RF choke. Okay, so that doesn't look like a sine wave, so that's not the path. So, just for curiosity, let's see what the other side of the choke looks like. Oh, that was it. Uh, not much. So, definitely not the path. Okay. I'm going to put this back on the base of this. Okay. Okay. The first uh, capacitor I'm going to remove is the ground capacitor to the crystal at 68 picofarad. So that definitely should be the path. And it is. Okay, we'll not oscillate without that. So, let me put this back. Let's see here. There we go. Okay, so that's part of it. And let's see. Let me remove the top 170 picofarad. Okay, not much change there. Let me take a look at the output. Okay, well the output went down. Not quite as pretty. Let me put that 170 back the top one here. Okay, that goes in here. And that goes right there. Okay. Okay, so we're back. Okay, so it doesn't stop oscillating, but the output isn't as high or as nicely shaped. Okay, now I'm going to remove the bottom 170 picofarad. 
Okay, there's the return RF path right there. I haven't changed anything else. Just remove that capacitor. Okay, so we have to have this capacitor. Putting that back in for this to oscillate. So, and that's because of the EB junction, or the BE junction, I should say, either, either way you <laughs> say it, the base emitter. Uh, we got to have an RF path, and with that path, that really influences the base on that transistor which controls the uh, electron flow mostly from the emitter to the collector and we're looking at the emitter right now so that's very interesting I uh, when I first looked at this I go wow it should have been obvious but uh, now it makes real good sense. And thanks for watching.